to engage in command and control, to tell individuals what to do and tell them how long it's going to take them and then uh, hold them accountable for things that they have no control over. I often say in a command and control environment you're effectively being held accountable for winning the lottery. Good luck with that. You're, you're not going to get very far. Uh, another thing that, that is critical to, to avoid if you don't want to kind of dismantle a team as it's coming together is pushing work into the team rather than allowing the team to pull work. The idea of an agile team is that they, they're responsible for all of the work that they pull into the team. That, that means that they choose to do within a certain time frame. As soon as I push work into the team, insist that they do extra work in a time period, I'm removing the need for that team to have any responsibility for the outcome. Effectively, we're giving the team an excuse. They can immediately say, well, we would have done that work except that you pushed all this extra work in. So as soon as you move from pulling work, allowing the team to choose their own work into a pushing work, look, we've got deadlines, we need to get this done, please can you just take this extra work in. As soon as you move into that, you're beginning to unwind what the team can deliver. You're beginning to uh, dismantle the environment that's gonna create a strong agile team. So we need to give teams and, and give individuals the opportunity to learn and grow. So to hinder a high-performing team would be to do things that take away that opportunity for people to grow their skills, to become you know, craftsmen uh, in, in the art that they're performing. There's one other thing that you want to watch for is opacity, is lack of information, lack of visibility as to what's going on. So uh, we hear a lot of uh, talk about agile metrics, about measuring what teams do and don't do. And many people are against it, some are for it. Our view is that you need to give as much information as you can to the team. They can bring their kind of brains to the table, they can think about it and look at what the, t what the organization needs, what works, what doesn't work, but they can only do that if you give them the data, if you give them the information. I also see a need for teams to have an active coach. As teams move forward in learning Agile, learning the techniques of Scrum, or, or even Lean and Kanban, they need someone that they can look to to help them kind of work through the challenges that they're going to face. A lot of organizations I see uh, take the mindset of we just need a little bit of training and then set the teams loose and the teams will figure it out as we go. And, and that can often be a mistake because this is a journey. Learning how to transition into an agile way of thinking and an agile way of working takes time. And teams are going to hit some bumps in the road. So, so really having someone that's there coaching them really helps them reach that high performing state. Now again, this could be an external coach or an internal coach that's going to help them get there. We need to give a team a clear purpose and one that doesn't shift from day to day or week to week. Um, make sure that they're intrinsically motivated by that purpose. In a scrum team, a lot of times I see the absence of or poor execution of the product owner role um, being a big hindrance to the team to succeed. The team's going to make the best decision they can with guidance, with support, but if you don't give them the information, they're basically making a decision without key pieces of the puzzle. So as soon as you have opacity in the organization in terms of what the team's trying to achieve, what the product is expected to deliver to the customer, what the time frames are, what the contracts are, things like this, then that's taking away from the ability for that team to actually um, make good decisions and continue to, to deliver what, uh, what the company needs.